Hello, and welcome to today's episode of Create a Life You Love. Now, as I've said before, and I will continue to say, I believe we all have a purpose, a destiny, a dharma. Today's guest had a very special, an extremely special destiny, and she is here to share it with us. Hi, Sarah. Thanks Hello. for being on the show today. Thank you for having me. So, Sarah, you're going to share your journey into teaching with everybody. Yes. Excellent. Yes. So my first question to everyone is, when did you know this is what you wanted to do? So for you, that would be, when did you know that teaching was it? I want to say when, even like in elementary school, you know, we always filled out papers of, all right, this is what I want to do, this is my future, this is my favorite color. I feel like I always wrote, I'm going to be a teacher. Um, I want to say maybe around like third grade. So ever since then, it's kind of been in the back of my mind of this is what I should do. Yeah, that's, that's wonderful to know that young, mm -hmm. that that's what you wanted to do. Yeah. Absolutely. So I, I have my questions here. Um, okay. Now, you actually teach special ed. Did you know from that point you wanted to teach special education? Um, at that young of age, not, I didn't know I wanted to do special ed yet. Um, but throughout the years, I mean, especially during college, you do a lot of observations and um, you can observe in regular ed and special ed, and at that point I said, this is like really rewarding to see um, growth in special ed and just a different uh, group of kids. So. Abs absolutely, that's, that's so wonderful. And so I, I need to ask, um, was, no, was special ed, once you saw that, was there something about that that made you say, okay, this is, besides it being rewarding, was there something about it that made you say, this is definitely what I'm destined to do? Um, I think working with kids is what I'm destined to do, um, whether it's necessarily special ed or regular ed. I, I don't know if there's either or. Um, right. Because I have a degree in both, so I could do both. Um, okay. But... Right now, I enjoy the special ed. I enjoy that population. Um, it's a smaller Excellent. group of kids that I work with. So, Now, that's interesting that you say you have a degree in both. So first, let's start with where did you go to school to become a teacher? Um, I went to UW-Stevens Point um, for be, to be a teacher. My first, at the end of high school, I thought about, OK, maybe I should do interior design. I like, <laughs> I like that. And so Stevens Point had not only interior designing programs, but also um, education. And it was also close enough from home, but far enough away to be away. So yeah, exactly right. Um, I thought about that as, so my first semester, I was interior design major. By November, I said, this is not me. This is not what I'm doing. I should have just started with special ed or education. Um, so by November of my first semester, I already yeah. switched my degree. Oh, that's, isn't so, that incredible? Like, there's just something inside of us that yeah. just pulls us in that direction if we listen to it, yeah. right? And I just it's, felt like I needed to try, at least try interior design, because I was... Like, no regrets. Yeah. Like, at least I looked at about. it, explored it. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So then, now, there's a teaching degree. Now, my sister is a teacher. Teachers hold a very special place in my heart. Now, my sister, all of her life, wanted to be a psychologist. Well, her her dad taught her, you're going to be a doctor, you're going to be a doctor, you're going to be a doctor. Okay. Like from five on, he had her at UWM summer classes, mm -hmm. <laughs> you're going to be a doctor. Yeah. And then she was like, okay, I'll be a psychologist. And once she started getting her uh, psychology degree, and it was in child psychology, and she was she did get her master's in it, and she said no. I want to teach. That's mm -hmm. what I want to do. So for her to teach at a collegiate level and to teach child psychology or to be, you know, in that field, there were a lot of uh, different classes she had to get or degrees that she had to get for that. So to be a teacher, there's a specific degree and classes you have to to take. So for special ed, 
What's the difference? What's that extra step that you had to take? Um, so I have, like I said, I have a degree in both regular and special ed to dual major. I had an extra semester, an extra, I want to say that it was about 70 hours of observations in classrooms. Um, and so a whole extra semester of classes to have both degrees. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I know that she, um, she says it's her passion. She would never switch over to treating people. Like, even though it takes up about 60 hours a week to, you know, you have your class time, mm -hmm. but that's such a small percentage. And a lot of people don't realize teachers spend most of their time working at home. Like, there's what you do in the class, but there's so much more after the class, all the grading, all the prepping, all of that. So do you find yourself in that same position? Yes, I am more productive at school than I am at home, so I'll stay late. <laughs> And, and like a lot of teachers, I'll stay late, four, five, six o'clock sometimes after school, yeah. even though the kids were out by two thirty. So yeah, um, I got a lot of that done after school for the most part. Excellent, perfect. So um, now there are different levels of special ed. I have my youngest brother who has Down syndrome, and he is just this amazing little bean that I love to pieces. Yes. and. He's, I think, I should know this, he's 36 now. So when he was entering school, that was the beginning, I think, of special ed, where they were doing what they called mainstreaming children like him or children with uh, these disabilities. So fortunately, they were doing that, mm -hmm. and my youngest brother was able to be mainstreamed through, uh, you know, from kindergarten through high school. Yeah. And it was amazing. Everybody knew him. Everybody loved him. They're like, hey, Stevie, what's up? As he'd walk through the halls. And, yeah. um, but my little brother is such a character to begin with. Um, but so there are different levels of special education. Can you explain some of the, like, the the levels to me, please. So every district is um, different on how they um, run special their special ed programs. Um, in Milwaukee, where I teach, um, uh -huh. there's like medical or handy more medical special ed, so very severely medical um, classrooms, um, and then there's more. Um, the same curriculum, so still the standard curriculum, but they need full support all day, and so they're in the special ed classroom all day. And then there's resource, which is I'm, I'm a special ed resource teacher. Um, all of my students are in general ed classrooms, and I'll go in and push into their classroom and help support them in that, otherwise depending on the day, time, subject, the students need at that day. Um, sometimes I pull them out into my classroom um, to do that as well. But they're all, all of my students that I service are all in regular ed classrooms, and I just support them and their needs throughout okay. the day. Okay, perfect. So the medical would be like the children maybe who have um, Asperger's, well, maybe not Asperger's, but Down syndrome or some of those other um, autism, some of those types of disabilities would that be accurate am I understanding um, that accurately yeah more severe so there's some students with Down syndrome that are a little more typical that could um, be successful in a regular ed classroom with support there's some kids with autism that could be successful in a regular ed classroom it depends yeah. on the severity of their disability yeah, that makes sense that makes and perfect so like sense. every child in every case even with every disability even if it, you say this kid has autism this kid with autism is totally different than this kid with autism. So it depends on that student's needs. Absolutely, absolutely. So I know uh, quite a few teachers, and I know that, the, and, and every teacher I know, almost, with the exception of two, teach some level of special ed. And are working, one is, one of my uh, friends that's a teacher works with the severely disabled mm -hmm. or like 
she'll say, let's go read a book, and they'll start, like, <laughs> biting her <laughs> sometimes, mm -hmm. which she says she doesn't mind because she completely gets it, she understands it, she knows, she knows that this is just part of who they are or their way of handling these stressful situations, yeah. but you're not in that situation. Um, I mean, I have students with all different disabilities. A lot of them are learning disabilities. Some are just um, have ADHD, ADD, ODD, um, EBD, which is emotional behavior. And so I deal with a variety of disabilities. So, I mean, okay, every student's different. Every year is different. So. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So sometimes you might not even know what you're walking into. Yeah. Yeah. It's different every day. But that keeps you on your toes. It does. And it's, it helps to create that challenge every day of what to work with. Yes. Now, most teachers have to get continuing education. Do you find that you do continuing education in general or towards special ed still? Is that? Um, that has changed recently. So now okay. I have to do a, like a, ref a five year reflection plan. It's kind of, it's a newer thing within the last seven, eight years. Okay. And so I don't, have to, I don't have to take extra classes. I just have to do reflections every five years. So, but Wisconsin's also possibly changing that and doing lifetime licenses, and that's going through right now, too. So. How, how do you feel about that, if they just do a lifetime license and you don't have to do those um, continuing education or up-to-date Things. Do you feel like that would be positive for teachers and students? Um, I think teachers and districts provide so much all this um, professional development throughout the school year. And so things are always changing in education, and I think districts are doing all right, keeping up with all that and providing all this professional development. Um, teachers already do a lot on top of... Yes. More, more, work more than 40 hours a week, so then if you tell them to also take classes now over the summer and do this to keep up with your, um, I think it's been a positive thing um, for teachers that I've heard. Yeah. That I, they don't have to do this. And I agree, because my sister does teach summer classes also, and so on top of all the classes she's teaching and all the homework, she's then taking classes yeah. and having to balance all of that with her family and her children and trying to you know get them to soccer and do a triathlon yeah. and so yeah. on and so forth so yeah. so you teach in Milwaukee where was your first the first place that you worked um this where I'm teaching right now is where I got hired so first job right outside of college got offered a couple jobs and took this one um so I've been there for four years at Emerson Elementary in nice. Milwaukee. Yeah. So was there something about Emerson that really drew you to it? So at every interview, you kind of get a vibe um, of the culture and the teachers around you and so, and the principal, and it just felt right. Nice. Um, a good connection that I had at the interview, so. Excellent. Perfect. Yeah. So, yeah, you know when, I think we do, we know when we walk in a place how it feels, and if we would listen or pay attention to how things feel rather than some of the other things we think we should be looking for, people would be much happier in their careers. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so, what are some of your favorite moments from teaching? Some of my favorite moments from teaching, so um, when you're a teacher, especially in regular ed or special ed, um, when kids understand it, all of a sudden they're, they're like, you're teaching this and you're teaching this and you're teaching this for a week, and you're like, oh, these kids don't get it, these kids don't get it, so you're trying something new, and all of a sudden the kids, I get this, I know how to do this, and you're like, done. Like, done. And so, um, and sometimes with some of my students, special ed students, it takes a little bit longer, so I'm still working on this one topic maybe for two weeks long, but finally when they get that, I'm like, yes, you get this, so you can read that awesome. word. And so that's always the exciting thing is the aha moment, I understand this, so. That's, that's, that's so amazing. I can imagine like, because you're very passionate about helping children get to the next level. So when you see them getting to the next level, that must be very, very uh, 
very gratifying. Yeah. Is there anything, any specific stories that you could share about that? Hmm. Specific stories. Um, I mean, I keep a lot of student portfolios, I guess I could say, throughout the year. And so um, showing some of the students, like, these are the number of words you could read in the beginning of the year and just continuing to show their progress to them and they see that how much they've learned throughout the year is um, the kids, I only knew one word and now I know 10. So that's oh. always exciting when they can see their progress as well. Yeah. So now what grades do you teach? I teach first, second, and third. So that would make sense because that is the time and point where they are learning words. They are learning the simple addition, yep. things like that, yeah. or simple math, I should say it. Um, so do they, by the end of the school year, do they understand the difference and the impact of everything that you've taught them? Um, some students, depending on um, where they are intellectually, I guess, some students um, understand how much they've learned and how much they've done throughout the year. Um, some of them are more, don't have much, much long-term memory that they're like, oh, the one thing I learned this year is adding because that's what we just got done with last week or something. So, um, <laughs> Depends on the student. <laughs> yeah. oh, that makes sense. That totally makes sense. Yeah. Um, who was your favorite teacher growing up? I think I had two favorite teachers. So I had one, uh, my third grade teacher. Um, she was wonderful. And she had, my. I have an older sister and a younger sister. And she had all three of us back to back to back. And so she just made a connection with our family. And she's somebody who I've, gotten coffee with to this day and she still teaches and I observed her when I was in college and I would go into her classroom every once in a while and um, so yeah at that point in my life I mean she was wonderful and then in high school as well I had just one teacher who just is able was able to connect with you and that you could just go there and talk to them about you know I'm struggling with this even if it's a personal thing or a school thing and just very supportive yeah I had a, a teacher in high school that was, hands down, just the most amazing teacher. And when I first met him, um, I did not like him at all. <laughs> he was very, like, no BS, like, very firm. But I went to uh, a high school. I went to a high school that was very... Um, a little rougher mm -hmm. and um, so like there was no crossing the line and the line was way here mm -hmm. um, and he actually is the the one teacher who failed me in a course anyway it was geography <laughs> And I, I just, I thought, oh my gosh, this guy, what is wrong with him? And then uh, I, I actually, I had to take geography in summer school, thanks. And then um, the next, the beginning of the school year, I took speech class. And he was the teacher for speech, and I wanted to drop it. I was like, oh, I just can't, I can't, I can't deal with that harsh of a, like that strong of a teacher again. Mm -hmm. But in the end, he saved me. He, there were, he just totally saved me and totally um, became my absolute favorite teacher. And there's only a couple of teachers that I even remember to this day that I, that I will ever think about. And he's the one that always comes to my mind first. And just what a wonderful teacher he was. Thanks, Mr. Wagner. You were <laughs> awesome. Um, but yeah, he, um, he really helped me in so many ways. And I do think teachers, although they're there to teach kids, they can really sometimes take that extra step and help them in so many other areas of their life because I ended up graduating early and uh, he did everything to make sure that everything went the way it was supposed to and helped me out and yeah. just just such a solid, great, amazing teacher that would have done anything for any student 
as long as they studied. Yes. <laughs> yes. So um, if someone's thinking about going into teaching, what would you tell them? Um, to be open and flexible. Um, I think you need to be very flexible as a teacher. Things are, especially in education, things are always changing. Um, classrooms change every single year, so there's a group, different group of kids every year. Um, and then get into classrooms and start working with kids now, um, volunteer, doing anything. Because um, the most, more observations and all of that you can get, and the more ob volunteering you can do, um, might lead you in a, the right direction of where you want to go. So. Yeah. So if, if, would you recommend to someone that they think about special, special education or is that a calling? Um, I always, honestly, I, whenever somebody says they want to go into teaching, I always tell them to look into special ed. First, special ed is very needed right now in education, yeah. I think, nationwide. Um, yeah, absolutely. And so I always say, I mean, look at it, try it out. I mean, at least, at least observe. I mean, it's not, I don't think it's for everybody. Even if you could be a regular teacher, it's totally different than special ed as well. So, but I always recommend to at least try and um, look into it a little bit, so. I, that's a great recommendation. I know um, some teachers, they'll start teaching and within that first year, they want out. They're like, okay, this, and some of them end up in a school that might be a little bit more challenging, have a little bit more challenging, or they end up in a high school or a junior high, mm -hmm. which is very different than elementary school. And would you say that for some of the teachers that you know that might be teaching junior high or high school, does it get better after that first year? Do you get a better understanding? Do you embrace it more? Or is it one of those things where it's for you or it's not? The first year is the hardest for everybody. No matter um, what grade. No matter what. I think no matter what. Um, I think every first teacher cries throughout the year. And, um, but you need to have a supportive staff. Um, a staff. A supportive staff is different than me going home to my now husband or fiance at the time during my first year. Um, the staff gets it. If I go home and complain the same thing to my husband, he'd be like, well, just do this. No, you can't just do that in the school. So. Um, you need to have very supportive staff, coworkers to help you through that first year. Yeah. So, and I was definitely lucky enough and blessed to to have that. To be in a, an environment where everybody was very supportive. Yes. And do you think there is a difference between teaching elementary, middle, and high school? Yeah. There's a different uh, vocabulary you can use with elementary kids versus middle school versus high school. Like high school, you can be a lot more real with the students of this is your future in the next couple of years you need to get it together you know and so um, it's not you can't do that as much or have you can talk about your future in elementary school but not it I don't think it connects to them right away so yeah it, oh absolutely you know. now let me ask you if um, if we if somebody is thinking about teaching, does it take a different mindset to teach high school, and I would think it would, than to teach elementary school? And if you're being placed in a school either as a sub or as a regular full-on teacher, the type of school you get placed in makes a huge difference. How do you make sure, again, that you can get in that right school for you? Um, you might, maybe you won't the first year. And if you don't, if you aren't happy or successful or something in that year, I mean, um, I'd recommend either trying something again, try that again, or find a different school at that time, at, even in the different district. I mean, there's, Milwaukee's huge. Yeah. Every school is completely different in Milwaukee. So it's very easy to transfer in there, but, um, I think you need a supportive principal, you need a supportive staff, no matter where you are, whether it's high school, ju junior high, middle school, elementary, so. Yeah, I know um, a lot of teachers that teach different grades or different skill sets to students, they can get 
a little bit frustrated. So is there something you do if you get frustrated that really helps you uh, recenter and get, get back into it with a positive attitude? What's your go-to? I always have a, it's the next day is a new day. Um, especially special ed, one day could be rough for the student and the next day they had the most wonderful day of this whole school year. Um, so just getting in the mindset of, okay, I'm done for today, we'll try something new tomorrow. Um, I usually, I'll relax at my desk at the end of the day if it's a rough day. And not, I won't do much planning, I won't do many emails, I'll sit there and just take a couple breaths and just say, relax hey, at the end of the day. So. This was it, and we're, uh, yeah, I totally get that. I, I can so understand that. Has there ever been anything that has, one thing that could stand out that has really made you say, this was absolutely the best choice I could have ever made for my career? As of, I don't know if as of yet, I mean, I feel like I'm still a new teacher, even though it's, it's four years in, but. Right. I feel like there's still a lot of years ahead of me. So um, if I found that exact moment of this is exactly why I'm doing it, I don't know if I've found that yet. But I have years ahead of me to do so. And I'm sure you have several moments throughout the day or throughout a week that will say, this is it. Yeah, I'm so happy this happened. Like when a student learns a new word or... Uh, something something clicks for them. Yeah. I'm absolutely sure that that's, uh, those moments keep you going too. So, yeah. Sarah, thank you so much for sharing your journey into teaching and your story and where you are. And it's, it's been such an incredible story. Thank you so much for taking the time to share that with us today. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. And I want to thank you for joining us and listening to Sarah's journey into teaching. If you're in a position right now where you're doing something that doesn't fulfill you, I always say, figure it out. You have a purpose. There's a reason that you're here. Each and every one of us should feel fulfilled each and every day with what we're doing and what we're giving to this world. So please take the time to figure out what your dharma is, where you're supposed to be, and what you're supposed to be doing. That doesn't mean you have to quit everything right here and right now to start something new. There's always transitioning. I myself have had at least three different careers in my life. I've loved them all. But you might love something for a while, and then there's time for something else. Follow your passion, follow your heart, and find that path that you're supposed to be on. Thank you so much for joining us today on Create a Life You Love. Until next time. Next time.